This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the KH-66 radar beam riding air-to-ground missile. The KH-66 can only be armed onto the MiG-21's inboard weapon stations. In the mission editor or rearming menu, we're able to see these would be stations 2 and 4, although in cockpit they'd be listed as stations 1 and 2. In game, the first step to employing the KH-66 is to set the master mode into air-to-ground mode by moving the switch into the downwards position. Next, I'll set the gun selector on the ASP into launch in the downwards position, the fire mode into fire in the upwards position, and I'll leave it in automatic in the upper position as well. Moving on to the weapon selector, the only station used for the KH-66 missile is the S-24 inboard station, stations 1 and 2. At this point, the final step is to enable the radar into operation mode and set it into fixed beam. We can see on the ASP gun sight, roughly in the center, we have a pipper displayed. This is the center point of the radar's fixed beam that the missile will guide along towards its target. By increasing the target size to max, we can use the central dot of the pipper as a more precise reticle for guiding the missile towards the target. Range to the target illuminated by the fixed beam is displayed on the range scales below the HUD. The upper scale in the lower white half displayed 1 to 8 is the scale used for the KH-66 missile. This is 1 to 8 kilometers although it can be pushed further. The missile can be guided manually along the beam, or you can use the fixed beam to lock a train feature, as we can see I've done here, at which point I'd be able to fire the missile and it would be guided along the beam towards the target that I locked up. At this point I'll roll in on the bunker and the air defense unit, the SA-8 Gecko, that I've placed over at the practice field just north of the Tumi. In this example I'm going to roll in on the target and lock it up using the fixed beam, fire a missile, and then I'm going to wait a few seconds to fire another missile, which will demonstrate the asymmetric load effect that is created by releasing one missile without releasing the other. So it's a good idea to form a habit of firing these in pairs. Though the launch authorized light is not displayed, I'm well within parameters to attack, so I fire the first missile at about 6 kilometers, and we're able to see my aircraft start banking due to the weight imbalance. So I fire the second missile at about 4 kilometers. Since the first missile hits the target right where I want it to, I break the lock and start climbing out, and we're able to see that the second missile tries to climb out as well, as it's still trying to follow the beam. In a short example here, I'll demonstrate the beam riding effects of this missile by firing a missile and yawing and banking my aircraft around to cause that missile to follow my movements. In the current simulation, it's pretty unlikely for the missile to lose the beam unless you were to manually disengage your radar. Here I fire in level flight and then roll in towards the target and we're able to see the missile follow suit falling down in towards the target right where I have my pipper. For this next example I'm going to roll in on a naval target. It's going to play out pretty much as it did with ground target with the only difference being that it's a naval target and I have to be a bit more precise as a miss will result in hitting the water. So in this case I'm going to again use the fixed beam to lock up the target. And as I lock it up I can see that the range scales are already unwinding indicating that I'm well within range to fire the missile. So I'll release the moment that I have a good lock. And again, I'm going to stagger my interval, although this time it's in the event that the first missile misses and I can break the lock and manually guide the second one in. One thing to note about doing this is that when you break the lock, it tends to veer the missile off in an odd direction for a moment until it picks up the radar beam again. As we can see, this was not necessary as the first missile struck and destroyed the target. For the final attack example, I'm going to manually guide the missiles along the beam without ground locking the target. Setup here is the same as it has always been, setting the weapons master mode into air to ground, setting the ASP into launch and fire mode, radar into operation, and into fixed beam. At this point I'll roll in on the target, and when I figure I'm within anywhere around 14 or less kilometers, let's say 12 is a better effective range, but they'll push out to 14 as long as you have airspeed, at which point I can hold weapons release, and I'll fire both missiles, as I need all the maneuverability that I can get, as I'm manually guiding these missiles along the pipper using the aircraft. So I have to be as precise as I can in my movements, or I can send these missiles vastly off course, missing my target entirely. This is quite challenging, and with the control input that I was putting in, I was surprised to get those missiles as close as I actually did. So it may take some practice to be able to develop the precision flying skills to be able to guide the missiles manually along the beam towards the target without ground locking the target. One final thing to note is that the missile only has a lifetime of 30 seconds. This could be due to chemical or electrical restrictions such as battery life. The point is that the missile will self-detonate after 30 seconds of flight. So we're able to see between the launch and when the missile detonates here, 
It's almost exactly 30 seconds. We can see this in two different examples here. Different ranges were achieved in these examples. As we were able to see in the second example, I went into a dive to pick up as much airspeed as I could at time of launch, and this did increase the range of the missile, although we're still bound by the 30 second lifetime limitation of the missile, at which point it self-detonates. So this is a thing to note when employing the Cage 66.